Hi, I'm Nathan Cole of natesviolin.com, and today let's talk about developing speed and accuracy at the same time. Uh, I was just talking about this with Noah Kageyama, the bulletproof musician, and he was reminding me that in, in sports, for example, when you go for accuracy and, and focus just on that, you're often unable to get speed, power, strength, whatever, whatever it may be. And the same can be true on instruments, especially the violin. Um, I remember, you know, as a kid, I just loved to play fast. Fast, faster the better. And at a certain point, you know, somebody, usually your teacher tells you, hey, you know, you've got to play the right notes and you've got to play them in tune too. And uh, so, for example, let's take uh, something from the Tchaikovsky Concerto. Some of these really fast scales and slurred passages that we've all practiced slowly. <laughs> Something like that, at a certain point, once you become a, a grown-up, you decide you've got to work on that in some kind of organized way, and so you, you practice it slowly, use all kinds of techniques, <laughs> focusing on your shifts, focusing on the sound, and probably at some point you even graduate to uh, working it up with the metronome, right? Put the metronome on slow, a little faster, a little faster, a little faster. And what I always found is that at a certain point, once I get about 75, 80, maybe even 90% of the way there to the tempo that I want, it just doesn't want to get any faster. And I think the reason for that is that when you're practicing it slow, all too often you're building in slow habits. Everything from the physical way that the fingers go down to the mental processes that direct those fingers, it's all stuck and uh, so it can be very hard to break out of that rut. So, what you need is a hybrid approach, something that lets you practice speed, but at a slow tempo. So how do you do that? And my favorite method is by grouping notes. So, when you play a group of notes, you wanna play each group as fast as you possibly can. You may even fool yourself into playing it faster than you thought you could but you can take time between the groups. So if we take this uh, little scale again. If I'm gonna start with the simplest groups, it's gonna be groups of two. And by the way, when whatever kind of practice I'm doing, I want my best sound. Uh, that's a mistake I see too often, people using a practice sound when they practice. Use your best sound. So now groups of two, if I'm gonna start on that B, So I'm grouping notes by twos, and you may notice that that sounds a lot like dotted rhythms. A lot of times I'll talk about dotted rhythm practice, or uh, you may have heard other teachers talk about that. And all that really is is a group of two notes um, pausing in between the groups. So again, if I'm going to start on that B, and instead of playing the long note first, play the short note first. So now I'm playing a group of two notes, fast as I can, taking time in between the groups. So I get that fast practice, but my brain has a chance to recover. Now this is important. When you're doing these groups, it's important to truly think of, in this case, the two fingers or the two notes as a group or as a unit. And this is something that uh, can trip you up because if you're just playing dotted rhythms or trying to play a couple of fast notes, you're going to get stuck again. So instead of thinking second finger, third finger, two, three, two, three, I'm going to really think of them as a unit. Um, so the two fingers are almost going to go down at the same time, very lightly, very easily. So now it's not two motions, but it's one. So when I play it, I'm almost not going to hear that second finger. The next group for me is an open string first finger. So again, almost don't hear that open string because for me it's just a one, that's one unit. Then two, three, so. One of my groups had a little shift in there, but that's, that's no matter. I just, again, I'm thinking two, one as one unit. 
again, I'm not so much focused on accuracy, although, I, you know, in the end I want to be accurate, but I want that feel that the shift is not a roadblock. It's just part of a group. So once I've done that, um, it reminds me a little bit of weightlifting, actually, um, where if, you, if you've ever done any kind of exercise like that, you may know that you're only going to get the best results when you're focusing on the muscle or the muscle group that you're using. So if you're lifting a big heavy weight um, and you're just doing it, you're going to get some benefit. But if you're focusing on the big muscle groups that are working and really feeling how they're activating and performing the motion, you're going to get a lot better and a lot quicker results. Same with this. I actually have to think of the next group while I'm waiting. So let's graduate now to groups of three. So, so now I've got one long note and two quick notes. So while I'm holding that second finger, I'm thinking 301, 301, that's one really quick unit. The fingers go down so quickly and lightly. Um, and that's how I'm able to play these groups as fast as possible. So next time I'm staying with groups of three, I start on the, th the third finger is going to be my long note. So and then again, I can barely hear those quick notes. So um, the next step for this, because so far we've just been talking about long slurred passages. Um, once you've done groups of two, three, four, perhaps, you're going to find this passage is just going to fly. And it's going to be really, um, really fluid and easy, too. Um, when you have something that involves bow changes, or whatever your instrument may be, there's some other technical challenge that gets thrown in. For example, this that comes a little bit uh, different place at Tchaikovsky Concerto. That's the slow version, but you want it to go beyond the bow changes and just kind of fly. And so to do that, you need to incorporate those bow changes into the groups. So let's quickly do a couple groups of two. So again, it's not exactly dotted rhythms. I'm thinking of groups. So there is a two open. Just feels like one note. Um, I'm going to keep the same bowings that I would use in the real passage. When I do, you'll notice again, I'm using my good sound. I'm even putting some dynamics in there because if I want them in the final product, I've got to practice them in even when I'm using a hybrid method like this because eventually I want some direction. All right. Now, one more aspect, especially for violinists, because look, Right here we've got a piano. Every note that you create on the piano is going to involve depressing a key. On the violin, some notes are formed by putting the fingers down, and some by picking the fingers up. A lot of people are good at putting fingers down, even if they're kind of heavy-handed about it. But some folks aren't so good at lifting those up. and speed on the violin comes from both and lifting the fingers up with great speed and energy is something you can develop really nicely with these groups as well so maybe groups of four if you're not lifting the fingers up with speed and energy you're not going to be able to perform these groups very well so this has a side benefit of uh, really working on those descending passages, the lifting motion. Now, so far we've been talking about slurs. When you want to 
practice a separate bow passage and get that speed, you can simply practice it slurred, you know, forgetting about the bowing, in order to get that coordination between the two hands. That's the, maybe the topic of another video, and I do have one on spiccato coordination that you can check out. Um, so, in conclusion, you don't need to sacrifice speed when you're going for accuracy. Sometimes what you need is this hybrid approach that lets you play groups really fast, but take your time in between. And you'll find that you'll get that speed, and the accuracy is just going to be a really nice byproduct of that. So, thanks for checking this out. Visit Noah at the Bulletproof Musician, and visit natesviolin.com for more tips and tricks and videos from me. Thanks so much.